George Pickens is mm. much yep. more talented than Justin Jefferson. So, listen, when you say it, the shock Let's factor. What had happened, cuz? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Barbershop Break Room, episode 37. And I'm getting my dick kicked in day trading right now. Currently down about $300. This shit is ugly. Jordan, you said you have 14 pages worth of topics. <laughs> Hit me with one of the 14. <laughs> so I only have two, but... You're at Lion's You didn't shit. even introduce our... Uh, Fuck, yeah. Kenny. You didn't even what introduce our guest. All right, guys. God. Matt's back. <laughs> Because you guys know what I think about white people. Oh, you guys we're not, even two minute, we're not even two minutes in and you got to bring up Just racism. kidding. I love oh, white people. My, my family's white. Got two white kids and a white <laughs> wife. All right. Welcome. Kenny Griever, friend of the shop. Loves to talk shit about sports. So we decided to have him stand in for Matt today as he takes a two week vacation. I got to stop paying this guy so much money, bro. Two weeks is fucking absurd. We'll see what I can do. Fill in for Matt and not try and screw it up too bad. Nah, it's all right. Matt's toxic, so it's fine. <laughs> All right, Jordan, All right. what psychopathic shit do you have for us? Icebreaker, I know we did something similar to this with Matt before. Open your Apple Music, Spotify, whatever you use. At the bottom, it'll tell you what song you were last listening to. What song is it? All right. Let me see. Everybody. At the very bottom? At the very bottom. Like mine is A Tale of Two Cities by J. Cole. I got halfway through it and then I parked. Well, it... You weren't listening? You were listening to the radio? Mine is, uh, again, by Fetty Wap. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a name I haven't heard in a That bitch is a certified slapper. When was the last time you listened to that song? It had to be in, in high school. Yeah, yeah, it had to be in high school. So, like, what, 20, 2012, 2013? I had a random playlist on, and it was on it. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie to you. When it finished, I played it again. Because it was slapping that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I had the downfall of us all by a day to remember. Little, little throwback emo goth self from I was about to say I don't even know who that is <laughs> it's it's like metal screamer uh, we we can say the obvious we know it since you want to say white people we know you are listening to that who hurt you <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> what you got Derek I was watching YouTube so when you, I clicked on it it just said not playing so I didn't type anything at the bottom Jordan so have you noticed to maybe play. don't admit to like distracted driving <laughs> <laughs> you can put YouTube on and just put your phone down. Yeah, but you said you were watching. Okay. Hey, have you noticed, like, <laughs> Derek doesn't do <laughs> anything. He don't watch TV. He don't listen to do music. Do you own a TV? I'm busy. Bro, anytime I'm like, Derek, did you see this? Nah, bro, I didn't. I'm like, everybody and their mom <laughs> watched this. Did you watch Johnny Manziel's uh, no. Untold? I'm, a, I'm not going to lie to you. I know when you cut me last, I said I was going to watch it, and I just... Totally disregard. It's it. just like major cultural things that like everybody's like, oh my God, I got to watch this. I'm like, Derek, okay, did you watch it? And he's like, no. But in my defense, I've been watching Suits like everybody else in America. Oh my gosh. What was your last fucking listen to song? I told you, A Tale of Two Cities by J. Cole. Got you. Okay. What was A Tale of Two Cities? I can't remember the lyrics to that. I ain't singing it. <laughs> Take fan. <laughs> nice. Hey, I have something that I really want to talk about. Let's hear it. Stan Van Gundy. Mm. came out and he made a statement about Anthony Davis making the top 75 team, but Dwight <laughs> Howard not. And he oh, said, crazy. quote, yeah. I don't have the quote. Um, <laughs> he pretty much says, this is bullshit. Ain't no fucking way, boy. Ain't no way Dwight Howard should be on the list, but Anthony Davis should be. So there is, oh, I do have a quote. I'm fried. You cannot make a case that Anthony Davis has had a better career than Dwight Howard. He's 100% I'm, right. I'm, Besides the chip. At listen, all. first off, making a case and it being true are two different things. You can make a case that Anthony Davis has had a better career than Dwight Howard. And let's go through it. All-star appearances. Eight to eight. First team, All-NBA. Four times Anthony Davis, five times Dwight Howard. All defensive team, four times Anthony Davis, five times Dwight Howard. Blocks leader, three times Anthony Davis, two times Dwight Howard. NBA champion, one time to one time. Now, the only thing I didn't look at was how many games they played because Anthony Davis has been hit by the injury bug and shit like that. But I'm going to be honest with you. Dwight Howard was dominant 
you know, in those early 2000s, you know, what, 20, 2005? Yeah, I played twice as many games as... Twice as many. 1,242, Anthony Davis, 660. Oh, Anthony Davis has had a better career. He's done the same amount in half the time. Career? That's like the whole career. Yeah, but those numbers, that's, get, that's gotta be skewed you, though. You give Anthony Davis 600 more games, he's gonna do what he's still doing? Hell no. Yeah. Hell yeah. no. Think about, all right, so Two time champion, uh, five times block leader, yeah. 12 time all star. <laughs> they're talking about games played. You got to think about how many games Dwight played when he was with at the end of his career, the NBA career, I should say, because he's still playing in what, like Thailand or something. Yeah. yeah so he's still having a career. But at the end of LA, think about how many games are in that where he played five minutes. It's so that's still going on. That doesn't that's really count. Yeah. It, it's still 600 more, though. It's not like we're talking 100 more. 600. More all defensive first teams, by the way. How many? Four to two. Four to two. So I think Anthony Davis is obviously way better offensively. You just Defensive player of the re- years. Rebound. One game. nothing or two nothing? Uh, according to pro basketball reference, it is three nothing. Dwight. All right, so maybe I'm going to walk it back a little bit, but <laughs> I still think Anthony Davis has a case here. I don't know. Maybe it's because he was in New Orleans for so long and you didn't watch a ton of his games because New Orleans was terrible when he was there but i'm still going with dwight howard and i really don't think it's that close i think it's very close and when you say first team all nba yeah anthony davis has been there four times dwight's been there five but just any of the all nba teams ad's only been there four times dwight's been there eight i think ad's a great player but if you're going like who you taking in their prime like if you're going with dwight in orlando when he was playing lebron and them when he was in cleveland with the first in i'm taking dwight it depends what year it is like, if we're talking about we were winding the clock back to 2008, sure, I'll take Dwight. If it's 2023 basketball, fuck, no. Dwight Howard can't do shit for you. He can't hit threes. He can't space the floor. He can't He can't bring the ball up court. They Anthony Davis is a modern-day – what'd you say? They are two different players. Yeah, completely. But, like, Dwight Howard got phased players. out of this era because he couldn't survive in this era. So is he Rudy Gobert before Rudy Gobert? Yeah, he had more Just, offensive ability than yeah, Rudy Gobert. But the same type of player. <laughs> It's not a terrible comparison, but we'll clip that up for TikTok because somebody will kill Kenny for that one. So I like, <laughs> I like that one. But no, I just wanted to see what y'all thought about that one. So y'all taking, okay, so if you had to take Dwight Howard at his peak, Anthony Davis at his peak in today's NBA, who are you starting your team with? Kenny, go. I'm still taking Dwight. Jordy. Dwight. Depends on who you, what you're building the team around, but Dwight, I think, is better in his peak than I'm still taking Anthony Davis because he fits any other offense. Yeah, but I'm using Howard. your own words against you. The best ability is availability. Yeah, for sure. We'll build your team around AD. You're going to get him for 15, 20 games, and then he's going to roll his ankle, He'll be listen, out 20, come back, found, tweak his listen, back. We looked it up like a couple episodes ago. You remember when we were talking about who's yeah. missed more games? Yeah. Did you know in the last, what was it, five seasons? Five. Right. Five seasons, he's played more games than Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and I think there was one other player in there, but it may have not been. That so, sounds made up. It was it was real. We did it on the last week's episode. It sounds weeks made ago. up to me. I don't believe it. I've got pictures. I'm pretty sure it was real. It's, it's 100% made it? up. That's yeah. that's fiction. I still have the graph. Play a game of fact or fiction. That's 100% <laughs> fiction. I don't believe it. Last game of fact or fiction we played, it was game three, Steph. Game three, Steph. I'm going to get off topic. <laughs> I'm going to get off topic a little bit here, but it'll stir the pot. And I already told you what I'm going to say about this. That was the all, what was it, the 75-year team? Mm-hmm. You know who I'm going to say about this and ask if he's on the list. We don't know if he was on it, though. Do you know if Russell, Russell Westbrook made the top 75? I think he did. I think he did, That's too. That's terrible. Hold on. That's so bad. I could go on a 15-minute rant about this. Read it and weep, bucko. Yep. Whatever. Damian Lillard, Chris Paul, Russell Westbrook. Girl. I don't know how you put Westbrook on that. Like, give me five minutes of this segment, but, like, I don't know how you put Westbrook on there. I mean, he was the 68th member. Dang, bottom of the list, Russ. I mean, bottom actually, of the list shouldn't have been on the list at all. I mean, if he's going to be anywhere, he should. Does be Russell on. Westbrook deserve to be in the top 75? No. Jordan, what do you think? <laughs> I'll jump right in. I'm going to be honest, I really don't know the, what the top 75 is. Like, is it of this year? The, no, it's the top 75 oh, players in NBA history. <sighs> so, I mean, you got Jordan, <laughs> Hakeem, LeBron. Kobe, Obviously, they're, they're all like, like top 10. But So, Kyrie didn't make it. Clay didn't make it. Dwight didn't make it. McGrady didn't make it. And then they put Ginobili on there. But Ginobili I'm going to be honest. As far as like accolades and stuff, Russ clears all of those people. 
I'm still putting all of them over him. No, uh, like Clay, how did, did T Mac not make it up? Yeah. There? Well, listen, T Mac was just a bucket. T Mac hasn't accomplished anything but scoring titles. Like you're sounding like Russell Westbrook over there. He has he has MVPs. <laughs> okay, I guess he has. MVPs. Yeah, he got yeah. his MVP when he got his triple double when Oklahoma City was terrible. And they were. That was the first time I've ever seen anybody in the NBA box out. The ball hit the ground twice, so Listen, they can let him ground. You're not going to hear an argument from me with that. But as far as the assist go, people still got to make shots. They do, but it's easy to do it when the ball's in your hand. Ninety nine percent of the time, because your team was so bad, it was us four and Westbrook out there. He still has MVPs. I mean, I guess you can't take it away from him. Who else is he above? Kyrie, Kyrie Clay, Clay, Brady, Clay. That's wild. That's wild. I think that's outrageous. I'm gonna keep it real. That was just you. a couple that they, you know. I think he clears all of them. No way. Like, I think Russell. Had a way yeah, for sure. Ginobili is just a great six man. I mean, he contributed to championship yeah. teams, but no, I, I, no. I think Ginobili is better than Westbrook. Absolutely. No. Yes. If you take Westbrook's athleticism, okay. prime Westbrook, and you take his athleticism out, what is he really bringing? Because he would just run at the hoop and. Aggressively try to break a rim. So when you said Janelle was better than Westbrook, my dude Jordan got so flustered. I saw his glasses fall. <laughs> Jordan, you had something good to say. I felt it because I saw I saw the anger. Do you think Mondo Ginobili is better than Russell Westbrook? What the hell no. <laughs> I, I I can't take Ginobili over Westbrook. If we go He's down a certified bucket. If we go down and a Westbrook's like You're like we just did AD and Dwight with all stars and all that. Listen, Westbrook has had a pretty solid career. He might be a bum in our eyes because all he is is athleticism. That's all he is. Never been a good shooter. He's been a decent finisher, kind of sloppy play, but he still had a good career. That's why when he's hitting on the downslope of his career, he keeps bouncing around because his athleticism is fading. That is and true. he really can't do anything else. That's and true. you could have, in Ginobili's prime, he was six man on that loaded San Antonio team. You take him anywhere else in the league, he's starting to get buckets and being a certified that you could even better than what he was all star. What you got, Derek? Just the list of quote unquote snubs of the 75 list is Paul Gasol, Dwight, Chris Bosch, Tony Parker, Vince Carter, Alex English, Bernard King. Your favorite? Bernard King, the bucket. And then Tracy McGrady. So you mean to tell me he's better than all them? So than all everybody he just listed. So better and having a better career are two different things. You cannot be better than somebody and have a better career than them. Like Robert Roy has seven rings and he's not better than most people who have two or three rings. Right. You think Robert Roy is better than Clay Thompson? No, I don't think anybody in here thinks that. But the, that's why the ring argument is is skewed. That, I, I do agree with that, but like he's a hundred percent. Not better than all those guys. He shouldn't be on the list. Go ahead. What you got? What you I just look at? I forgot Melo made the top 75. That's, I can agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Melo, Melo and Tracy are the same person. Yeah. To prove me wrong. They ain't playing no defense. They're just getting buckets. Yep. <clears throat> Jordy. So, I looked up the comparison of Russ and Ginobili. I mean, I, that's, uh, this is a good TikTok. I like Russ, this. Russ is better. He played... Russ has played 1,094 games. Ginobili's played 1,057. Okay. So they're right there in terms of that. Right. Ginobili has four championships, and he's in the Hall of Fame. Other than that, when it comes to accolades, he ain't Russ shit. is better in every category. Does Ginobili have a six-man of the year? Yeah. I think he has two. Russ should he be, has, though. I think he just has one. Okay, one. Russ should have all those accolades when you're gunning and shooting four or fifty a game. Yeah, yeah but I mean, like in his case, Russ was the number one option most of the year. Ginobili, Ginobili was what? Was you had Duncan. Four. Yeah, four. Probably right? four. Duncan. More four. Yeah. Duncan. There's still number one options though that he cleared Duncan in the top Parker, seventy-five was list. Was he there when Robinson was there for a little bit? He might have been. Yeah. He might have so, been. But that's remember. what I'm saying. Russ should have those accolades when you get to shoot fifty times a game and get ten percent out of it. True. You're gonna put up numbers. I'm still taking Russ over to Novi every day. Hell week, no. Twice on game. You're day. you're fried. Four times on game. No, no chance. He averages nine more points, on four 50 more, more rebounds, shots. Uh, five more assists, point three more steals, and the same amount of blocks. In his you, throughout his whole career. I've made my argument. You can list all that to me. I'm still taking. Ginobili I think Russ deserves close. to be there. I do. No, no chance. Wrong. Incredible. All right. So just for TikTok's sake. Does Russell Westbrook deserve to be in the NBA's top 75? 
and then flip the conversation. It wasn't on you. It was on him, but it's okay. That's fine. Yeah, you don't need my face in it. Everybody knows <laughs> I'm pretty. What you got next, Jordy? Uh, well, we can go back to football. Jonathan Taylor last night was a, given the okay to seek a trade. Did you hear who put a bid in for him? The Dolphins? Yes. I know they were exploring it. Who the, else? The Dolphins. The Eagles as well. Oh, The Eagles yeah. have placed a phone call. Just a phone call. They can go fuck themselves. <laughs> They're trying to build a fucking they super have team. running backs over there. <laughs> They're going to just release them. Here's, here's something that I think is going to happen because the name is always going to be thrown into it is somehow Kansas City is going to be linked to this and it's going to piss me they off somehow. Already, uh, the odds for him to sign Kansas City is, I think, in the top five. Right. If he ends up there, that's yeah. crazy. So just back to the Ginobili thing. I know we're ending it. Ginobili field goal attempts average is 9.7 per game. Your the mic sounds is, crazy. I hope it doesn't sound fucked up in the episode. Like, yeah. Like fucked up? Yeah. Do you hear it or is it just me? What does it sound like? You just sound like you're you sound like so you're talking far through away. a microwave. And you just sound like you're like literally in No, that no, didn't help at all. Do <laughs> Shit. You sound like you're talking through a microwave. It's okay. Keep going. I just, I just noticed it and I thought maybe it was just me. I'm sorry. Well, but, it might be fucked up. I mean, you, I think you'll sound fine, but it just sounds a little like muffled. Was it the whole time? I don't, I don't know. Eh. Oh, thanks guys for letting me know. I just did. <laughs> Go ahead. Just tell now, me about, tell me about Jingle Billy. Jingle was, um... Nine point whatever, what did I say? Nine point seven. Russ is eighteen point three attempts per game. Doubled the shots. Okay. Doubled the shots. Yes. But when we talk about first team, all NBA, all all defensive team, um, assist record, scoring title, all of that, Russ is gonna clear Ginobili and it's not gonna be close. But I get it. Ginobili is a six man, so it's a hard comparison. I'm sure the minutes aren't even comparable. That's what I'm saying. Right, well, we'll see Russ as a six man next year. We will. Maybe. He go fuck around and start watch. So do we think, do you guys have any predictions on where do you think Jonathan Taylor will end up? The Dolphins were very high on getting uh, Dalvin Cook. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, they have like nine running backs. Yeah, they so a they could even offer the Colts two running backs in return plus some picks. I think he'll probably end up in the Dolphins. Do they have any first rounders? I have I don't no, think probably they, not. I think they, they gave them all up for, for a while, but you can still give yeah. up seconds and thirds. And then Bradley Which, Chubb too. I think they gave up maybe a first round. The Bradley no. Chubb one was from when they got the San Francisco when San Fran went and got Trey Lance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they gave up some for Tyreek yeah. Hill and some for Bradley. But Chubb. like the thing is, is Miami's like almost a lock in every big name that comes up because they're with Mike McDaniel, they're just willing to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it to make a run at it. I yep. think, I think they, they threw all these players at their offense to try and make two a good. Hey, you are, Shua made you apologize <laughs> last year. Don't start that shit again. He made yeah, you Yeah, now he got mashed potato brain, so. Oh my goodness. He jacked and Mashed up. potato brain still better than Kenny Pickett. Speaking of Tua, First preseason pass. Did you guys see that? I did not. What was it? A pick? <laughs> it was a pick. I think it, I'm pretty sure it was a pick six. Yeah, Jordan and I were watching that. I think we over. Uh, you guys overanalyze preseason football. Nobody cares. Yes, yeah. unless, unless it's Cade York. No, I think we overanalyze. <laughs> I was going to say I also have <laughs> Cade York on here, but my topic just says Cade York. Dot dot. Well, dot. let's fuck. Let's fucking talk about it. Because guess what? <laughs> you know what I got? Cade York with a fucking question mark on my paper too. <laughs> now, me and Derek talked about this. Is it Cade York or is it Bo Jahork? Ho Hork? What's my name? Bjorkquez. Yeah, is that? Say it one more time. Bjorkquez. Yeah, I think that's right. Bjorkquez. Bjorkquez. The I feel like Devontae Smith wanted to do say Fuego. 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 That's a Fuego. He said Fuego. So who's at fault here? Is it Cade York or is it Bjork? Both. Bo. Both. Both of them. You think it's both of them? I don't. I think it's Cade, bro. I think so, too. I think it's Cade. You notice the second year in a row we've drafted a kicker and it's not going well? Second, Not second well, year in a row, second, second time. time. Second yeah. time. I mean, I, mean, I think you solved the problem by getting a different holder in there, and if the holder screws it up, screws it up, or not the holder, sorry. If York screws it up, can't still make a kick, then you know it's him. Cut him and get somebody else. Bring back Phil Dawson, baby. At 48 years old. That's fine. He'd still do better. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shit, Vinatieri played till he was 60. I don't he retired know. at a regular working age. I don't know if Phil has a has a forty five yard kick in him left, bro. 
Yeah. Listen, if we're still having to rely on 45 yard field goals to do anything, we're probably in not a good spot after signing Deshaun Watson for 230. Listen, Justin Tucker won the Ravens of the game from fucking midfield. Okay. Well, he's the anomaly. Anything okay? is possible. So this that's you guys getting Deshaun and all that also made me want to talk about don't start espn don't start their preseason rankings don't start all right go ahead you're starting let's start so they have their preseason rankings going into the season and people on the hot seat they have the browns at 18th and stefanski on the hot seat i think in the browns world stefanski will be in the hot seat but i don't think he deserves to be in the hot seat yet from our past hell no not, not even from our past. If you look at Kevin Stefanski's tenure so far, it hasn't been one year of consistent, consistency yet. His one year with full consistency, we won 10 games, won a playoff game. The year before that, that was Baker's rookie year. So you're working with a rookie quarterback. Or no, I think that was his that's second year. I don't think that was his rookie year. Because he was there with Freddie Kitchens for his rookie year. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So you're There's dismantling three then. your first year as a head coach. You're kind of dismantling the old system, implementing your new system. So that first year is kind of like a trial and error. Throwing shit at the wall, seeing what sticks, right? Typically, they gut the team, get rid of the quarterback, do this, do that. And let's be real. I've always had a conspiracy that Kevin Stefanski does not like Baker Mayfield. And I think he wanted him out of there. <laughs> second year, wins 10 games. Third year, he's got a Baker Mayfield with a torn shoulder. So then you look at this past year, he's got Jacoby Brissett starting 11 games, and then he's got Deshaun Watson that hasn't played football in two years, and he's not allowed to get massages anymore, so he's extra tense. So let's be real. He hasn't had any consistency yet with his teams to really be able to judge him on what he can do other than like some blunders in games going forward on fourth down. You know, what was it? Fourth and one, he put Jacoby Brissett in. Fake quarterback like sneak. Or <laughs> yeah, fake quarterback sneak, throw a bomb out of the end zone. You're in field goal range. So yeah. he has had made question he's made questionable coaching calls, but I don't think he deserves to be on the hot seat yet. I think you begin the conversation after this year. This if he year has started. Every, you had a full offseason to get Deshaun ready. You got everything you want. You added Elijah Moore. They got Dewan Jones, who looks like a steal of the draft right now because he looks good. He's a, he looks good. He's a grown man. But I think you begin the conversation if he's like subpar this year. I know I keep saying the Browns are going to go 500 because it's Cleveland. They'll figure out a way to go 500 even with 17 they'll just games. Tie. Yeah, they'll just tie one game. Before. It, it is possible. But if it, I think if they don't have a successful year, I know that the AFC North's a gauntlet. But if they don't make the playoffs and aren't even close, you have to begin the conversation. Okay, so Derek, before I don't want you to go yet. I want I want Jordan to go because he's the outside looking in. And then I want you to finish and bring us back since you are the Browns fan. So our resident non-Browns fan, what do you think? About oh, Stefanski being on the hot think? seat. So there, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just playing. Yes, yeah, so what do you think, honestly? Um, like, do you think he deserves to be like on the hot seat? I, think? I think that he should get one full season with Deshaun just to see, and then next year be the hot seat year. I agree. I, I think so, too. Because, I mean, like you said, he had Baker, but it was inconsistent. Jacoby, I think he should have one full season with his Pro Bowl quarterback. See what happens. He also had the OBJ experiment that didn't go very well yeah. either. So I think that was due to quarterback blood. Because <laughs> you were saying it was inconsistent. You talk about Baker Mayfield being inconsistent. Well, like his, or his injury, inconsistent. his injury, his not playing good. Is what his second year he wasn't great. Yeah. Then his third year he was good. Yeah, I think it was his third year was his good. I think that was our playoff year was his third year. Yes. I think so. And then his fourth year he got hurt and was playing with that bum we're shoulder. We're probably fucking up the years, but you guys get the point. Yeah. Go ahead, Derek. What were you about to say? I say give him give him another year. Um, I mean, I go with your conspiracy about him not liking Baker for the reason like his labor torn, whatever, whatever it was. Kept him in. He was throwing sixty fucking passes a game. Kept him in. That's what it felt like. Come and on. I'm like, damn. Tell like, me you're not working against off, him. Hand it off to Chubb. Hand it off to Hunt. Chubb him to death. You know what I'm saying? Oh God. Yeah, and almost wore a shirt to say Nick fucking Chubb. Um, <laughs> now give him one more year because they they've had different quarterbacks that do different. Things. That's that's true. So, like he hasn't had a system, kind of how the Ravens have a system. They have three quarterbacks that do the same thing. Over there. Exactly, that is true. The Browns had different quarterbacks that did different things. We had Case Keenum. Yep, and they Josh know their Thomas identity too. Different. That's the other thing about the Ravens and like the Steelers. They have identities. The Browns have never had an identity because there's never been consistency there for a number of years. Like if you think about it, Harbaugh's been there for how many fucking years? 
Mike Tom has been there for how many fucking years? Too long. Even the Bengals had fucking Marvin Lewis there forever. Yeah. Eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight every no year. No playoff Marv, man. Yeah, but the thing is, is that's consistency still. Whether yeah. you're consistently mediocre or consistency a run team, whatever it is, there's consistency there. And the Browns have never had any type of consistency at all. So I think Kevin Stefanski definitely deserves one year, if not even two more years, just because it's just been throwing shit at the wall left and right, trying to see what sticks with this team. Like, and ain't shit sticking. Last time we had consistency was 1950s. What, what was the consistency there? Jim Brown. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know what direction we were going in. I thought, I thought we were about to go a Jackie Smith direction. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. All right, fuck the Browns. So, oh, wait. So, I'm sorry. One question real quick. I'm sorry. From the Browns fans in the room. Jordan, you can chime in too. Do we sign Robbie Gold for the hell of it? Do like maybe create you create quarterback contract like you know battles you sign a quarterback you make the other quarterback work do you sign a kicker and make your other kicker work? A lot of teams do that. Do you do we sign Robbie Gold? I think you change the holder first, and if he still can't make a kick, then you make that move. Because if it's the holder, you just have whoever the backup quarterback at DTR go be the be the holder. Or Dobbs. Fuck that. Matter. Sign Robbie Gold to make Kate York be the holder. Hold my ball, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. See, I'm, I'm I'd go blank and shit before gold. I'm a big fan Blankenship. of having that, that holder be like a backup quarterback or someone that's out Absolutely. Because you can run fakes with it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, having DTR is a holder. The punter is not going to throw a dot. The punter is not going to fucking do anything crazy. You have DTR, maybe even Josh Dobbs. Yeah, I think you that would can help. You have fakes out of the pool. You that is, that is something I never even thought about. I just said, that's get the holder what, out of there. Yeah, that's what I like. And yes, Rodrigo Blankenship, the dude that- Is he a free agent? Yeah, they just, the Bucks just cut him. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. That's all I was about to say. McLaughlin, the old Browns kicker, right? Just won the job in Tampa Bay. Everybody do, does well once they leave Cleveland. So. so speaking of the Bucks, JPA has breaking news. Kyle Trask better not be the starting the quarterback. The starting quarterback for week one don't against say, the Vikings. Don't say it, Jordan. Is Baker Mayfield. Oh, uh, uh, I'm just saying, God damn it, it's done. So we could go ahead and set the line now at uh, over under two and a half picks. Oh. Over I'll under take, five and a half games until Kyle I'm gonna, Trask I'm gonna is take the, I'll take the under. I'm going to take the under. He's throwing two picks. He's not going to throw over. Oh, he's throwing over two picks under five games before Trask takes damn, over. Damn, Baker. The first game. <laughs> two, and a half, two and a half picks will be the line for the first game. I'm taking the over. I bet I'll, you he throws three or four. Give me the under. He's a dog. Dog Stop shit. it. Yes. <laughs> so that before, is, is before we bring it back down to his dog shit pick of the week. <laughs> every, it didn't work out good. every time I said a quarterback is dog shit, they went off immediately the next week. Geno Smith, <laughs> Geno Smith went off that next week. Yeah. Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. yeah. Remember, he beat yeah. the Steelers that next game. Yeah. So before we move off of the preseason rankings and hot seats, I did want to say what they have the Steelers at and allow everybody to discuss. We got to talk about that too. So say that, but then I have a question to ask you. Okay. You though, you two shut up. This is for you. Okay. So they have the Steelers 14th in the okay. preseason ranking. So four spots ahead of the Browns and hot seat is Matt Canada. Yeah, it was last year. 14th disagree, <laughs> hot seat Matt Canada agree. Hot seat Matt Canada, he's sitting on the flames. <laughs> he's sitting on top of the flames. He should, mean, have been, a- he should have been fired after last season, but the Steelers don't fire nobody. Right, I'm a Browns fan and I said you should have fired Matt Canada. They just like in the middle of the year. Don't said, fire nobody, bro. Keep him. Well, yeah, as keep a, as a Brown fan, you can keep him till the end of time. Coach. You know what? You can make it. Yeah, you can make his make ass the head coach. Head go make fuck life it, put him at quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. There is a gentleman in the media that I thoroughly enjoy. I enjoy his Twitter. I enjoy his takes. So I Brown's enjoy guy. every. No, 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 no. This is one of your guys. Sure, I enjoy this gentleman. Podcast top tier. On TV, top tier. Twitter, fucking hilarious. I'm talking about Ryan Clark. My guy. Love him. Ryan Clark made a very interesting interesting statement over the weekend. Did you hear it by chance? I probably did, but refresh me. He said, George Pickens is mm. much yep. more talented than Justin Jefferson. So... Listen, when you say it, the shock See, factor. what had happened, cuz. <laughs> no, when you say it, the shock factor makes you be like, fuck's he smoking? Don't hit me with a butt. Ain't no butts, He's bro. He's about to butt. I'm, I'm saying butt. But what? But wait, there's more. He had this, he needs to specify 
which department he's better in because he's not more None. talented overall no oh, he's a better catcher he's a better no. pass catcher he meant in no. general no. he's more talented no. he meant what he said he's a better Listen, pass catcher i'm gonna be honest with you big george pickens guy here love him i think he should be in prison but i like the guy a lot george pickens <laughs> does nothing better than justin jefferson and when oh. i say nothing he might not even wipe his ass better he's a better blocker that's offensive pass interference when he does it, okay? <laughs> Listen, when it's a run block? We see, I'm fucking around. We've seen Justin Jefferson make one-handed catches crazy. Like, I know George Pickens yeah. has made those crazy catches in but camp. But he does it consistently. In game, we've only seen it two times. Fuck camp. Fuck practice. Okay, it, it's, makes, not, it's not OBJ the real thing. He makes crazy catches all the time. His, in practice. His in Browns Walmart. catch, when he played the Browns, that sideline catch, amazing. I'm not taking anything away from it. Do you remember when Justin Jefferson did that similar catch in double coverage? In a no. game where it really mattered while they were driving downfield down and needed a touchdown? Of course you don't remember. Justin Jefferson is better than George Pickens at everything. I think George Pickens has top 10 talent with the right system, right quarterback, really earn it out. I think he'd be a top 10 wide receiver. He might even be able to be close to that top five, maybe six or seven. Better than Justin Jefferson, though, bro? So you think if if you switch, their, switch where they are, put Pickens on Minnesota with Kirk, throwing the safe ball every single time, you don't think he's going to be— George Pickens is sixth. He's not going to be as good as Justin Jefferson. Hell no. Bro, I don't think he's better than Devontae. I don't think he's better than Stephon Diggs. I don't think he, he, I, he might be better than Tyreek because Tyreek is just freaky fast and he's not really a phenomenal route runner. He's a body catcher. I get the arguments there, but Tyreek is still top five. But I don't think he's better than Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Jamar Chase even. Debo? You're saying he's the best? Uh, he might be able to catch Debo because Debo's not top six or seven yet maybe to me. So I, I think he can catch Debo, yeah. For sure. Not the best receiver in the division. No, he ain't better than Coop. He ain't the best receiver on his team yet. Not yet. I mean, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with that one. Yeah, I was gonna say who's better? That's so how much I don't pay attention to Deontay. Deontay. It'd be Deontay. Oh, that is, yeah. But if you want my honest opinion, I think George Pickens is a better overall wide receiver than Deontay Johnson. We're living with the spectacular catches, I think, and I mm -mm. think we're drinking that Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. Run like after it. catch, Deontay Johnson, why the fuck do you go he backwards? He'd be running backwards, bro? for sure. Why do you go backwards? Do you think George Pickens is better than Amari Cooper? Uh, I don't think so yet, but I think it'll be close after the season. Nah, dog. Nah, 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 nah. See, that's the thing. Amari's like, just safe, though. Like, he don't... Amari Cooper's been safe. consistent for yeah. like seven He's consistent straight. and he's safe. Yeah. He's... Great route running. He's going to put both hands on the ball and just catch it. I mean, he's like Tyler Lockett. My dude ain't really had great quarterbacks like either. Like, yeah. And he's been still putting up great numbers. He's like like kind of D-Hop-esque where he's just had like <clears> – <throat> I mean, he's had better quarterbacks than D-Hop though. Like, I mean, yeah, he's had what? You Dak. had Deshaun the one year and then you had Dak the one year. So, like, those two are comparable. But then you go from like Carr. Yeah, Derek Carr. Carr, Matt Schaub was D-Hop's uh, <laughs> quarterback at one point. And Kyler Boyle, just, probably at one point. Probably fucking Tom awesome. Savage. You remember yeah, Tom, Tom Savage? Savage. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, you said Derek Carr? Yeah, Derek Carr was for um, Amari Cooper. Then you had um, – oh, That's right. Uh, Dak. Yeah, give me Derek Carr for Dak. Yeah, no. No. Yes. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. But I, listen, I'm really curious to see what George Pickens does this year, but I think we're a little being a little crazy with where he yeah, is. On the I, I agree that Ryan Clark's statement was a little out there. A little? Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. You didn't have to go for number one. Go for like number three. You know what I mean? Like when you're making a statement, be like, be like, yeah, man, I think he's he more talented than Devontae Adams or Stephon. You know what I mean? You can't go for the dude who just number one dude that's. <laughs> Clear cut. Like number and, one in fantasy. And was like, clear number one last year. No debate. Clear number one. Yeah. And like I said, I don't put him over Chase yet. I don't put him over Diggs. He's improving it. Adams. I mean, yeah, he hasn't, like Derek said, he hasn't proven anything. I don't know if the mic is picking up his voice. Uh, no, nah, uh, it sounds way better to me. Does that sound way better? I'm going to keep it real. It sounds, the it sounds like he's talking through my mic. Hey, I'm going to be real with you. Shit. Give me the Heisman Trophy winner. Devontae. Fuego. I'll take Devontae. That's cool. <laughs> so is Pick George Pickens better than uh, AJ Brown then? No. Okay. I was going the second guy because I don't think he's better than the first guy. Well, I, we're just listening. AJ like, Brown had almost fifteen hundred yards. Justin year. Jefferson is has been so good and solidified himself. He is being taken widely regarded as the number one player in fantasy football. You still but, got Cooper Cup. <laughs> like I didn't even uh, mention. Oh Cooper yeah. Cup. I mean, I forgot about him, but I'm saying like when, I mean, everybody's been so running back heavy in fantasy that receivers have fallen to the wayside. 
but I mean, he's so good. He solidified himself as top three pick now. Hold on. What just happened? What, what just happened? Whoever did the mics before unplugged my mic. So Derek's mic has been time. unplugged the, the entire time. episode. Yeah, so that mic is the one that's plugged in. And it's not even plugged in because yeah. I unplugged it. Well, I've mic. been picking you up, though, so you'll at least Probably have volume. Yeah, yeah. Jordan. I'm, but you hear, like, when I do this. You can't, you can't hear me like yeah. this. You won't hear that on the episode. You can't hear me right now. <laughs> no, I can't. But I heard you in my headphones. Damn. I didn't hear you in my headphones just Damn. now. All right, Jordan, go ahead and introduce another topic while we still have a couple more minutes. Jordan, talk real quick. Hello? <laughs> it's me. Oh. Hi. Hey. Hello. Penis. <laughs> well, you unplugged me, bitch. I just heard it. There oh, you. there was another. There you unplugged me. You Zoo, sure? We got to end with the fight. We didn't even talk about the fight yet. I'm out yes, on that. Then. You, you That's okay. Me. There was another topic that I really wanted us to get to, and it's like, what is it? I wanted to talk about the Dwayne Haskins, what happened with his, uh, the ruling of his death. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to brush past that because I feel like that's like very rude to brush past it. I want to talk about the fight too, but t- you can tell me though. But like, I don't, I'm going to feel bad if I just be like, damn, that's crazy. All right, so O'Malley and Al Jermaine. <laughs> like, because I'm going to end up doing that. But yeah. what was it? Uh, he was drugged and robbed. They said what, by a dude and three girls? Yeah. He was drugged, robbed, and extorted before he got out of his car on the highway. Yeah, they said. running out of gas and getting hit by a truck. They said he was like roofied, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. So he was pretty much just out of his mind. That's why he got out of the car on the highway. Yeah. Mike, by the way. He was drunk and uh, drunk and drugged. Damn, that just hurt. We got to brush past that now. I don't want to talk about this no more. Like, I really don't. Yeah. That, it's, That's it's, a different topic for a different day. Damn. Hey, did y'all see Munoz, Munoz called a... Uh, did you my back in? Meth O'Malley, what did he call him? I lost. I don't know. Speaking of UFC, do you see uh, what's it, what, the one of the Paul brothers and Dylan Danis going at each other on Twitter? I yes, did uh, X, bro, I guess. bro. I did. See Dylan <laughs> Danis has been posting every single relationship Logan Paul's wife has ever been in. Yeah, that's fine. Is it wife or are they just is it fiance? fiance? They're I getting, mean, yeah, they're I guess getting it's all the married. same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. They're boxing in like two months. I'm gonna be honest. Logan might, Paul go knock that guy. I might off. buy it. I might not even East it. You I go respect it so much, you ain't go stream East. <laughs> <laughs> key, bro. This is the best fight promotion I've ever seen. You think stream East could sponsor us? I don't think that's legal. Okay. All right, so real quick, I know you want to talk about the fight, but I'll get in the conspiracy. Do you actually think building up to these fights, like these dudes actually hate each other or are they just doing all this as like a ploy to Both. sell tickets? I think So I think they actually hate each other. Dylan Dennis is one of the biggest trolls of all time. And he's boys with Conor McGregor. Logan Paul's already, according to him, sent him de- cease and desist multiple times because of his tweets. Really? Yes. I didn't see that. Yeah. He tweeted and said, Logan's a pussy. Stop sending me cease and desist letters. Yeah, but like Logan Paul's got a bunch of weird people backing him on this. He's yeah. weird. Oh, yeah. I mean, both the Paul brothers are weird. I mean, he got all the OnlyFans chicks backing him up because uh, Dylan is going after his fiance so they're all like don't attack the women oh his wife is the only fans chick no that was, just the, saying, that was the only question. fans chicks are coming in going <laughs> don't attack face. women i'm just like i don't know if that's <laughs> what i want to represent face. i don't yeah. know if that's what i want to represent me in this moment like listen your wife's a whore only fans <laughs> no she isn't it's like uh, <laughs> yeah bitches stand back <laughs> Anybody, <laughs> like this isn't a fight for you like you probably want to chill you know what I'm sit, sit this one out buddy yeah that's a little crazy anybody that has not scrolled through the dylan danis's twitter <laughs> go there Scroll through. Okay, I looked through. It's, it's so shot. he it's has gold. had a couple of posts removed. He posted two of her nudes. Oh, this cat is a wild. They both boy. got removed. Fuck a fight! You gotta um, shoot this cat. <laughs> you post nudes in my way, bro. You here you go. Die. He ended up on a t-shirt. So that too? This is photoshopped, but it is. Uh, Good thing it's not on you. Let me see. A picture of this one. <laughs> Bro, you wearing, can't do that. So if another grown man posts a picture of your wife like that, are you putting them on a t-shirt? You gotta shoot him. And what I mean by <laughs> yeah, Photoshop, so, so when I say it's Photoshopped, uh, the balloon is Photoshopped to say happy 30th, Dylan. Jesus Christ. Wow. It was a happy 40th balloon for somebody. And he posted this a couple of days ago and said, wonder whose birthday it's it was. It's a real picture. That's diabolical. Photoshop balloon. That's yeah, diabolical. Yeah. Real picture that he posted and said, 
wonder whose birthday it was. Yeah, you got to take the gloves off. It's, better, it's better knuckle boxing He's at this point. playing fair. Yeah, better knuckle boxing at this point. All right, so we got approximately off. five to seven minutes. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. Did they stop it too early? Go ahead, Jordan. I had an opinion immediately, and after watching some videos, hearing some other think pieces, I and forget, seeing some stuff, I so changed it. I forget what fight we watched. I have something they, to say. They stopped the fight. This was a couple months ago. They stopped the fight. It was a title fight. I think you got to put the champ out. You're talking about Izzy and Pierre. Was it? Yeah. I think you have to put the champ out. So I have one thing to say, and then I'll let you guys go on a little further. So I was with you. I watched the fight, saw the whole thing beginning to end, saw him flip over. Didn't look like he was giving up. Looked like he was about to try to do another takedown real quick. He looked like he flipped over to his from his back to his stomach to try to grab his leg, something. Um, but after watching it, I watched one video. They slow mode it. We keep it real with you, my G. He was in survival mode. He knocked him out. That last hammer fist before he flipped over, it put him out. There was a, I got to find it. I meant to send it to you guys. When he came down and hit him in his head and you see how it bounce off the mat, you saw my dude's eyes shut. They didn't open immediately. Like he was out. And then he like kind of came back too, guarded and flipped, but they stopped it, I think, because of like that moment. And it, it did appear that he's about to go into like fetal position mode, curl up into a ball. <laughs> But he knocked him out, bro. Like, he, he was done, I think. Uh, so, I haven't seen the angle. I, I got to find my. Uh, it was weird. Like, after that fight, the only thing I saw was Sean O'Malley saying, you're the man. You're the man. You're the man. To himself in the mirror while holding the belt. Uh, that's the only <laughs> that's thing I've funny. seen about the fight. I mean, listen. Big underdog. He, he made a case for himself that he deserves to be there. You know I didn't I mean? think he deserved to be there. He, I don't he, think he deserved to even be in that fight. I don't think he's to. done enough before. Prior to. Prior to. But now you see that, now that he he's may have not. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want to interrupt you. Go ahead. It's still, I don't know. Like, yeah, he won. I don't know that he still had done enough prior to be there, though. But he won Shit. big. Like, yeah, he won. He knocked him out. He won. I'm not taking that away from him. I think he's the new Conor McGregor for the UFC, though. He's the new marketing. He's the new... I get you there. The new guy. What were you about to say, Derek? I mean, the new Conor McGregor isn't bad because Conor was a dog. He wasn't shit at fighting. He was so, winning and knocking people the fuck out. <laughs> O'Malley was an underdog. O'Malley was an underdog back-to-back -back fights. Peter Yawn. I think he well, lost that fight. He rewatch it. I think you'll you'll see that he he won that. Plus, if you rewatch it, odds on Sean O'Malley. To I thought he was going to get his ass whooped this this time. I thought he I was going to get taken down and choke the fuck out. Yeah, but he proved me wrong. Another underdog knocked him out. He took fifteen unanswered shots. I don't think they stopped it early. I do kind of agree. Like, kind of let it go a little bit, but. 15 unanswered shots. He wasn't going for anything. You said he looked like he tried to go for a takedown, but he wasn't even facing the same way. He just so, turned. He just flipped around. O'Malley was still behind him. And it's I think not like he, he was just he in could, survival panic mode. Well, a lot of the time when they do that, they just cover up like that, and then that's it's over. And he was about one more punch away from hands over the ears. Mommy help. O'Malley's the best yeah. striker in the UFC. Bro, that right hand was mean, bro. My dude threw a punch, and before you know it, O'Malley picked this spot. Cracked him, bro. Nice, right on the button, put him straight down. And you even seen that. Like, when he put him on the ground, he O'Malley had him seeing stars, bro. My dude started blinking real hard. Like, it, that was a good knockout punch, bro. Like, O'Malley, like, I didn't, like, not respect him prior to that, but, like, he definitely earned my respect he more. proved a lot of people wrong. Yeah, like, I didn't, like, have many, like, ill opinions about him. Though I've watched, like, probably six or seven O'Malley fights before. Cause like I'm like, who the fuck is this dude with the pink afro knocking people? To fuck a lot out? of people don't like him because of the hair, the way he acts, I don't and, mind it, bro. and shit like that. Like when I used to hoop and I tuck my shirt in and shit like that, like bro, you just got thirty drops on you by a dude with a shirt tucked in. Yeah. You just got knocked the fuck out by a dude with pink braids. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. That's embarrassing. But before we get out of here, <laughs> hey, that Gary cat is disrespectful. Dean Gary, he disrespectful. He they wasn't even a middle finger when he was chopping my dude down like a tree, and he was just like, get the fuck up. Yeah, and then my dude's on the ground, scoot towards him, like, "No, come down here." I'm like, "Bro, don't you die?" Neil Magny did not want to fight him at he all. He wanted zero parts. He couldn't even walk. That, he literally couldn't walk. At one he point. was getting talked about being the next Connor because where he's from, same place Connor was. 
And then he's undefeated. He's talk he shit. Fight. He's a dog. He could fight. Five star um, performance. The only thing he didn't do was finish him. So. Yeah. Yeah, but he definitely uh he definitely is a good fighter. But I'm I'm gonna be watching for that cat. A hey, uh B. Real quick, one more thing. Make Going back to football. We got two Trayvon minutes. Trayvon Diggs. People, oh my people god, his know, likes are public. People oh my gotta god. know that likes on Twitter are public. No Anybody way, can go on there. Me and Kenny were just bro, looking at that. Yeah. It's a chick wearing a fucking a strap on. A strap on and it says like equals it, you'd suck it and it's in his looks. No, bro. Yeah, yes, I swear. It's a like no, I swear hey, Trayvon on Dix has had a wild off season, bro. Derek? Or not even off season. I'm about to say, I might have it. Make sure it's, what make do you sure want to call it's muted. Make sure it's muted. It's, it's, it's not muted. off season. Okay. He called what's his, he called Dak a bitch. And then he's on Twitter acting a fool. That's about as bad in, as Doc Rivers. When his Twitter is now private, by the way. <laughs> I tried to go like, because I was like, what the hell is that? So I had to go through comments to find what he actually liked. Yeah. What yeah. is wrong with the Dallas Cowboys organization? They got some them. freaky boys. Parsons out there in Penn State fucking his, fucking like his teammates. <laughs> and you got Trayvon Diggs wanting to suck some uh Do you some think strap-ons. so here you go? So we'll Rangers. end it with this. Damn. Do you think the Dallas Cowboys, when they vet everybody out and they do the thorough <laughs> investigation? They gotta have something weird. Is this like is this like one Jerry of, like, Jones the questions been like, "Hey, like, what's out, what's the wildest shit you've done in your day?" Yeah, and the worse it is, the more, more likely the more you move up the draft board for Jerry Jones. Like, he heard about Michael Parsons. He's like, "I will draft him." He's like, "Damn, damn you race right? dudes! <laughs> I'm moving up." All right, everybody, that's it for Barbershop Break Room. See everybody next week. <laughs> yeah, this cat called him. That's why he wanted Johnny Manziel. This cat called him the rubber resuscitator. Oh my.